do you guys just want to talk about Jamulus and what you are and what you do and what your app solves? There, there are two Jonathans on the call. I'm, I'm Jonathan Baker Bates, uh, and um, I uh, got involved with Jamulus about for about two years ago. So, well, actually, before just before the pandemic, when um, Jamulus experienced a huge peak, the project had started from a very sort of small base. It was, it was. Um, it, it had, in fact, been going for about 10 years previously to that, I think, maybe more, um, set up by a guy called Volker Fischer, German guy. And I bumped into it, I can't remember how, and then got in contact with him saying, I see, you know, you, you're getting loads of downloads, you know, like, like literally sort of 500% increase. Um, and, and there's very little documentation. You know, there's, there was two little pages on his website. So do you want me to help you out with that? And And so him and I just basically hacked out a sort of plan for documenting it out. So the history of journalists so far has have, has been, it was a one man band. Now it's a sort of, I don't know, sort of 10 man band, I suppose. Um, and um, we are uh, sort of, if you like, um, sponsored now by by uh, Volker Fischer, who, who uh, once we got involved, once it seemed that, that the project was sort of, you know, getting more stable um, with more people involved. He then stepped out. He, so, so he's now not actively involved so much, um, but he, he, he sort of uh, is is our spiritual leader, if you like. Yeah. Um, and we keep in contact with him for that. You want to talk a little bit about, um, about your choir and how maybe that influenced you to, to create this product? Actually, I think I, I wouldn't really call it a product as such. It's more a project, a free time project um, where people um, who have multiple ideas and just contribute at the beginning of the pandemic really wanted to um, bring music over the internet and I couldn't really think of any solutions except Zoom and then after a lot of research I finally found out about Jamulus and then yeah it shaped my choir and me a lot because um, at the beginning we just sang over Jamulus a little bit and then after some time we even sang in our church online so I would say it enabled us um, doing a lot our choir really um, benefited a lot from Jamulus and yeah we are still using it. Uh, so the people with us today we have Eric Van Tries. he is the senior manager of solutions engineering here at Constant uh, and then I am Vulture's developer advocate, so I'm kind of like the middleman between the marketing team and the software development team. So when this came to me, uh, there are, are a lot of musicians in the room here. So when this came to me, I was super excited. And then also Eric Van Trees was excited because he's a DJ. And so uh, he's actually the one that came across us. So Eric, do you want to talk about how you found uh, Jamulus and maybe uh, how that, I guess... Um, you know, set you off on this journey of trying, uh, of trying to get it onto the Vulture platform? You know, I, I here's the thing. I really, I, I thought this software was so cool when I found it. We were talking on Discord one day about how it would be possible to to use my friend's drum set, electronic drum set, and myself playing, a, you know, a synthesizer, how we could jam in real time. Zoom, we found there were issues with, it compresses time sometimes. I don't know how to explain it. Like, if he's playing in beat, it will attempt to shrink that time, right? And it will all of a sudden speed up out of nowhere, right? Uh, Discord just wasn't cut out for continuous streaming of music in general, unless you really tweak your settings. Jamulus, though, it was one of those things where we had joined a room together, just an empty room, you know, and it was able to work easily, you know? played the drums i played you know a bass line over it just to see if it worked and then what we found was that other people would just be in random rooms and you know you could join those rooms listen to them right if they're playing a style that you can you know jam on then you know you go for it you know come in real subtly or whatever and all of a sudden you're you're jamming together maybe someone else joins you know i found that if uh a room has people in it, it will grow to more people sometimes, you know, either listening or attempting to, you know, participate. Uh, and I thought that was magical, especially in a time when everybody was feeling isolated, you know? I got a question on how you guys solve that, because if Eric is playing at 140 beats per minute and I'm syncing with him and I'm also playing at 140, however, I probably won't get his feed hitting my ear until maybe 50 milliseconds. So although we're both playing at the same metronome beat, 
we're actually playing offbeat where I'm playing the upbeats, thinking that that's the downbeat, and he's playing the downbeat because he's, um, I guess, the one truth on you know where the downbeat is. How do you guys solve this? The not so much the audio latency, but more about being in sync, even if both people think that they are in sync, based on the, the latency from ear to ear. I think actually we don't solve the problem at all. It's um, more of um, people um, compensating in their heads because um, the interesting thing is as we started um, singing with Jamulus, it was quite difficult, but after maybe three rehearsals, it just went normal to have a little um, latency. If you yet now want to look at the technical part, yeah, of course, I could tell you about um, low buffer delays, maybe about um, protocol changes or things which were done by Volker Fischer, I can't really explain to you. But I would say the main fact is that we have one server which receives out of sync music and then pushes it out into bursts to you. And then you don't really, um, don't really have this um, issue like peer-to-peer -peer solutions where everybody has a different out of sync um, Thing. It's more about everybody has kind of the same latency, but it's just speculation. Particularly with choirs, it's interesting. So, so maybe this is one of the reasons why, why choirs are a big thing with jamalists. Is um, is that in the real world, people do often sing with with a fair amount of natural latency. So, so if you're in a large auditorium, you know, and and, and you're I don't know singing bass, and there are troubles, and whatever, you know, so all over, then you might be standing you know, a number of meters, 20 meters away from each other. Mm. And there's going to be roughly 15 milliseconds involved in that, you know, Correct, 10 to yeah. 15, maybe as much as 20 milliseconds. Um, there's also secondary effects as well with echo and stuff that your brain will be dealing with. As a rule of thumb, you know, we, we generally say most people can get up to about 50 milliseconds delay and some people claim even drummers actually it's, um it's one of our developers is a is a drummer and, and and he says he can just about get up to 70 milliseconds delay and you just have to play ahead some people even um even can play um with 100 something milliseconds because i i know people from world jam um jamming from the us to people in europe i couldn't really imagine that it works, but potentially it seems to work. Yeah, we have. So, so for example, there are some articles out there on the internet that flatly state that, that you cannot play remotely over the internet because of the latency. It just makes it flatly impossible. And I think that's sort of trivially true in the sense that, yes, you are out of time with people. You're always going to be, there's always going to be some kind of latency. But um, mm -hmm. but if you approach Jamless with a sort of open mind and go, okay, you know, there will be some delay, but uh, but the point is that we're trying to, you know, as a group of people, we're, we're trying to perform and sing and jam in time and we just all make it happen. But to answer your question in a very long way, you know, how do you cope with it? It's it's the player's attitude that, that they make it work, uh, I think, by and large. Uh, but that said, it's easy, you know, if, if you want to play in the same city as someone, easy to get 10 milliseconds, 12, 15, maybe. Uh, you hardly notice the latency at all. Not monitoring yourself in real time helps mm. a lot. Just listen to the Jamulus feed. You know what I mean? Don't try to set your line in to listen, you know. <laughs> on, the, on, the, uh, on the website, we go as far as to say that that's the Jamulus golden rule or, or rule number one. It's like, you know, listen to the sound coming back from the server, which paradoxically makes singing hard, of course, because it's very hard not to hear yourself. When you're singing. <laughs> sure, sure. Just to put it into different contexts, a thousand milliseconds is one second. When you're writing with a pencil onto a tablet, give or take, that's about 15 or 20 milliseconds. They say that 20 to 25 is about human discernible to where you really kind of can't pick up on it. When, when you start getting up to like the five or 10 millisecond, then it's almost like, you know, virtually in sync perfectly, which is so, you know, very difficult over the internet, you know, pushing all that audio feed because we're, because it's not a text message. You're pushing either high fidelity audio or, you know, some kind of like back end low, low bandwidth solution. And then syncing that, um, you know, that 
in itself, just to put it into context for people, is actually very impressive. I had a question too, is um, if it were to be out of sync, do you do any post-production analysis before it hits the feed? No, not really. Okay. I mean, of course, there are um, some technical things like um, packet reordering or something like that, but really, we don't we don't really modify the audio, except you switch on um, delay panning, then maybe the panning is some kind of audio effect, but that's not really something big. Hmm. The sort of philosophy so far of Jamless, I think I'm right in saying, it, 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 is that the audio is pretty much sacred. It's a very sort of, not really simplistic, that's the wrong word, but, but sort of purest way of doing it, you know, which does, I think, contrast somewhat with, with some of the other um, approaches that people have been having. But yeah, I, I think as, as an open source project, you know, we're, we're, you know, we don't see ourselves in, in competition with anyone else. So uh, it's always very interesting looking at, at, at what other people are doing. It's, you know, sometimes I go off and have a look at the, you know, the, the GitHub conversations that are happening on Sonobus and stuff like that, see what sort of issues there um dealing with and whether or not they're similar to ours uh, and by and large they're not in fact it's <laughs> interesting yeah you can turn on um reverb by the way you you can give yourself yeah. reverb. but i think uh, it's client side yeah it's client side, uh, it's client side yeah. Yeah. you want to give us uh either a demo or a walkthrough i'm more than happy to talk but if you wanted to, to show the product that would be great too so okay so you see that yeah there you go yes uh, that's perfect. Okay. Now I connect to what might be uh, hopefully a reasonably fast server. So the, the thing here is the ping time, um, and we have various genres I can choose from. I can go into rock, if you like, yeah, something like that. Um, and you can see uh, that there are um, quite a few servers available. There's usually not very many people in in a server, maybe the time of day I'm in the UK here, but the theory I have is that people don't tend to want to join a server with no one in it. But if there were someone in there, then I could go on here and that would be 12 milliseconds. We were talking about the delay earlier and that would be a perfectly fine um, uh, delay for me. So I could go into that. So I'm gonna double click on that or connect to it with the connect window uh, and up I come and it's given me a welcome message uh, and I'm the only person on it. Uh, but uh, but then I would uh, start playing and everyone if, if, I, if they were there would hear me. So that's, essentially that i can i can uh, chat to them as well uh, so so here i can you know, i can say hello everyone uh, and they can see me yeah so there's a simple very simple uh, chat interface there and that's pretty much it you know so generous is in essence extremely simple in that sense and uh, and we're looking at a public server here you can also set it up privately or or, um, or or unregistered as we like to call it there's also quite a lot of chat sort of um vocal um you know just just talking that happens in general as well because of course it's um optimized for music but that makes speech also extremely efficient so you know you're you're uh, able to talk across each other perfectly happily uh, and have a good old conversation so uh, so quite often you come in and you just find people talking about music rather than playing it <laughs> so. and so you support like any kind of audio in right you want to talk about anything about the technicalities of, of that actually we we support everything which has an ASIO or jack input and output so you could mm -hmm. connect an audio interface you could connect um, OBS to make a stream there's not really a hardware requirement. I, I actually uh, tend to use an external mixer uh, and just put all my stuff into that. And then uh, the output from the um, audio device just, just goes into Gemini's. Yeah. So, and if you want video, then you should use something like Jitsi because mm. in, in my, um, from my experience, Jitsi has the lowest video latencies um, on the market. So if, we want to sing and see each other than having video over Jitsi is probably um, the best thing to have. Um, but sometimes it's out of sync, sometimes it works. So you can't reliably say anything about um, video and audio sync. If you wanted to have video with the audio of Jamulus, I guess you can do it internally through your laptop with something like Loopback or some kind of, you know, like meter reader. Um, is there a way to route the audio as a virtual source through, let's say, Zoom or um, OBS of, of some kind? 
Yes, of course. Okay. I, I was doing it multiple times for YouTube streaming. World Jam is doing it every week. And yeah, I would say it's it, it you need a little bit of setup, but then um, you can use Jamulus for everything. And you could, in fact, even stream a choir in Italy um, to France and then let them sing together. That's something I want to try in future. Or you could um, virtually place a band from Italy, Germany, Great Britain, and maybe uh, even Russia in the United States and then have a um, rehearsal or something like that. So it's everything is possible. Uh, are, are there any other things that you wanted to, to chat about? We're kind of up against it, but um, you know, we did the demo. We talked about some of the technical aspects. Are there any future Icebox things that you want to tackle? Very recently, we've, we've uh, advertised uh, for uh, any designers who want to come and help us with this the UI and because uh, we, we've got a, a massive amount of icons for example uh, that could do with a, uh, a redesign but also the, the UI itself could do with a refresh so hopefully uh, this year we might get some traction on um, on the way things look uh, there's also a um, a desire I think to maybe separate the UI from the from the back end in, in, in some way um, yeah, and there's even a open pull request um, from somebody, I think, from Thailand. Um, and I hope that with its changes, you will be able to have um, real private sessions where somebody can book in maybe. Um, and also the possibility to control the server remotely or something like that. Generalist is pretty simple. And there's, there's no authentication, for example. Um, there's no um, possibility of, of, of having user accounts and stuff like that, really. So um, so this does put a cramp on things like its use in educational environments. There's always sort of discussions about new features and functions. Uh, we release uh, very often. Uh, you know, we, we are a very active project. I mean, I think, you know, we, we, I can't remember now, but I think we've been releasing about once every three months almost. Um, and and usually there's a good uh, couple of chunky uh, new features that go in each time. So we show no signs of slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and maybe if somebody wants to uh, wants to take over the mobile project, then maybe that's yeah. right. Yeah, the mobile one is is uh, is is in in sort of embryonic form. Yeah, it I mean it 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 works, but. Yeah. Well, that's what we can say. It it, yeah. it works, <laughs> but not in not so well that you would necessarily want to use it. But the philosophy of Jamless, you know, is always keep it simple, though. So, where can people find out about your product? Jamless.io is where it's at, and and hopefully there there should be uh, everything you need to know about that there. There are also um, quite extensive. Um, uh, discussions on on uh, Facebook and uh, also numerous YouTube demonstrations uh, yeah, which which actually cover some of the points that you've raised in this interview actually so yeah so it's because it's been around for a while so there's quite a lot of uh, sort of um, collateral um, information about Jamulus. Uh Eric you have, you want to say something oh I just want to thank everyone for for showing up today I think it was fantastic I think it's a great piece of software uh, it's allowed me to sort of randomly collaborate with people uh, across the country and really the globe, you know, occasionally you just pop into a room and listen, you know, the fact that it's open is incredible, you know, uh, sort of a uh, comparison to like, like I said earlier, you know, Discord or TeamSpeak, you can join a room, find people that are interested in the same thing as you and just start playing music with them, you know, and see where it goes. You know, I think that's yeah. magical. That's right, and and, and also I, I point out you 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 can also run just you and your band or you and your mates uh, can can run a server uh, that's not publicly listed, so you don't have to bother with people sort of coming in randomly. Um, so there is two modes you can run it in. So yeah, but uh, so well, th thank you very much for reaching out and uh, and talking to us. Okay, so I guess that that wraps it up. Uh, so for everyone who's watching, be sure to check out Jamulus, and my thanks to Eric, Eric, Jonathan, and Jonathan. Um, and once again, uh, thanks for everyone, uh, and we'll see you on the next uh, episode. Oh, thank you. Yeah, All thank right. you.